What is good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the K Reviews Podcast. To my right, we have Isaiah. What's going on? AKA Kid Native. In the house. To the right of him, we have Tyler, AKA Luce D, AKA DJ Atlas. AKA Big Hail on the Beat. What? <laughs> God, God damn. AKA going back on it. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I like that ad lib so much. He said, MC, please stop. <laughs> DJ, please stop doing it. <laughs> DJ, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> DJ, please get out the booth. <laughs> DJ, please play my song. DJ, I'll pay you to play my song. <laughs> That's happened before. You know, I got $30 one time off of one song. That's pretty good, bro. I was inside the Nugget. Yeah, it was fucking DJing and this girl she was feeling me though like like literally like she came up and she was like feeling me and i was like all right oh, chill. i was like, like chill. physically like, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was like can i have a song and i was like bet <laughs> and i guess she went to the university of like tennessee and so she was like can you play the university of tennessee's like theme song and i was like hell yeah i can i didn't have it so i had to like go on youtube i had to like Log into the crappy Wi-Fi and everything, download it, all that. So it took a good amount of time, but I played it. Yeah, and she went crazy, and she sent me thirty dollars on my Venmo. Oh shit! So that was That's pretty what's sick. Up. That's what's that up. one song. Hell yeah! And she bought me a drink too. Oh damn, bro! Dang, where you she at? Night, where bro. you at? <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> he said, "Where you at? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go round again. Maybe we turn back the hands of time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know? Anyway, guys, we're talking. <laughs> 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 Today we're talking about uh, Two Chains and Lil Wayne. Yeah. Welcome to College Grove. Welcome to College Grove. College Grove. College Grove. Welcome to College Grove. Not College Grove. College Grove. Yeah. You know, I at first thought it was College Grove too. Like yeah. just by reading it, that was what my brain first thought was like College Grove. But I was like, no, no, no. That was that's where my brain initially went as well. All right, how do y'all want to do this? Do you want to go track by track? Oh, yeah. Track by track. track I like that track. way. Keeps keeps the structure. Mm. We need to do over here. We're gonna, me. Talking about me. <laughs> I feel like all of us. <laughs> this whole fucking... We can start with the scenes. What did y'all think about uh, 50 Cent being the narrator? I thought he was a sick narrator, actually. Um, I didn't know that he was going to narrate it until, until I think you said something. And then uh, I was like, what? Like 50 cents on that shit? That's freaking crazy. Or it might have been you that said it. I can't remember who, but somebody told me that he was narrating it. And I was like, that's crazy. Um, but I think he did a really good job, actually. Like, I think so, too. He was chill. And I don't know if you've heard, like read his book or specifically heard his audio book. Uh-huh. Um, but he, he kind of sounded exactly like in the same tone as when he was doing his audio book. And, and so I, I thought that was pretty cool. He had a very like a cinematic like narrator kind of vibe. Yeah. So I felt like he was good for it. I thought so too. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I didn't think it like fit. I don't know. I okay. Don't know. You thought it was weird? Uh, yes and no. Like it's dope like seeing like 50 Cent like narrate the album of like these two goats. Like that's a hell of sick. But I was, I don't know. I I feel like it like was just like a just cuz we could. I don't know. Yeah. Like, just like a fuck it, we can type yeah, of thing. Yeah, because like Metro Boomin had Morgan Freeman. I hate to like compare because then like it loses its magic. But uh-huh. like, that like fit in the story and like it was like a, I don't know, I feel like it was just like a punch in sometimes. Okay. And then I didn't really feel like the song after would like match with like the narration. But I don't know if that was even the intent. Yeah, I kind of feel you there. Yeah. Like it, I definitely didn't see like why they were placed like where they were. It just kind of seemed like they were spaced yeah. evenly. Right, yeah. But it was cool that like throughout the whole thing, there was there was like a mood switch because I think they came out pretty hard like uh, welcome True. to Collie Grove you know and then it like got more kind of like Mackish like, okay what's up shouty you know because then <laughs> yeah. they started talking about like yeah. all that stuff and then uh and then kind of like R and B ish at the end with like Usher and all that stuff so it was cool to yeah. see that movement so I don't know because I I personally thought that um the narrations or at least the titles. Of the narrations, like, matched with the switching of the energy, mm. you know? You know what, actually, now that you mention it and I'm looking at it, I kind of see what you mean. Yeah, maybe I didn't pay attention. Because, like, or at least specifically with scene three, ladies' man, and then it, that's followed up with PPA. Like, I can kind of see how yeah, that... Yeah, that like, one, like, makes a little sense. Yeah. 
And then Duffel Bag Boys and Millions from now, like, they're both, like, money-related. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I can kind of see it now that... Yeah, so at least title-wise. Yeah. Mm. At least title-wise, you know. Yeah. Uh, So, of that first stretch from, I guess, scene one, so from G6 to Long Story Short, what was, like, your favorite track from that stretch? My favorite? Or, like, what track mm-hmm. do you guys want to talk about from that from that stretch? Or we could talk about all of them if you I thought I thought Pressure was a really good lead <laughs> single, like for that, that album. Was the lead single? Yeah. yeah, Pressure was the lead single for the album, and so I thought it was I thought it was a really good one because it kind of showcased the energy of the whole album, without giving away too much. I like it, it had like the pop, the pop element to it, so that way it could like spread and get attention. Yeah, but it didn't give away like too much of what the album was going to be. But I thought I thought it was a great lead single. Um, I don't know if that was my favorite. I think G Six was such a great come out song, like okay. for. For, like, you know, I'm imagining him there at the stage and then, like, 50 Cent's doing his thing. But then Lil Wayne hops out for G6, boom, and that shit just starts going ham. Like, I would, mm. I would have been so hyped. And so I think G6, out of out of those three, was probably, like, my favorite. For sure. I think I would say Pressure is my favorite of, the, of those three. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Big Diamonds, for some reason, I can't remember how it goes right now. Big Dog. The, oh, yeah. 21 the 21's Savage. on that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That one's cool. G six is cool, but I think Pressure was the one that I like actually like liked from from like mm. that first portion. Yeah, I liked my favorite out of this one is uh, Big Diamonds. Okay. I just like uh, you no, know, I've always been an early fan of Twenty One, and so like it's kind of like a little like holy fuck, he's on here with Two Chains and Lil Wayne, and yeah. he's on the hook like yeah, like that's hard. And he comes in super hard, and like he keeps the same flow, and he just digs the whole time. Super cool. I think it was like, I think it was a really cool collab, a really good opportunity that they seized there. He but fit, yeah, perfect. he fit, yeah, great. yeah. Well, in the how how earlier I was saying, uh, I was imagining like I was at the stadium, you know. So like G six makes it hype, and then uh, pressure, you know, you already heard that as the lead single, you know, you're going in, uh, uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, all of a sudden Twenty One Savage comes out on the stage, you're like, what? That's sick, you know. So that's yeah. that's lit too. So I like how they brought Twenty One Savage out like pretty early on. And like you said, like he had that, the hook. He, like he had a really strong element in it. Oh, actually, is that long story short? Yeah. I was gonna say I was. I started thinking about that yeah. one because I think that I started to remember which one that one was, and yeah. I was like, wait a minute, that one might be my favorite. It's, it's a tie between Big Diamonds and Long Story Short, but Pressure is very good. Like I'm not, like knocking that at all. But like just like I just like the project that Big Diamonds is, and then Long Story Short, I just like. Wayne on the hook and just wake up like uh, yeah, it's yeah. fucking nice. It's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's super clean. And I forgot about that beat on Long Story yeah, Short. Yeah. It's just so soulful, like bro. Yeah, yeah, it is. And they just ride it and I think it's very oh, telling that two chains, yeah. I think it's very telling that each of us named a different track mm-hmm. from that portion and then still mention Long Story Short. Like I think it's very telling that Yeah. 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 I mean it was just such a great portion right there like that whole chapter right there was just so freaking good welcome to collar grove you know then scene two millions from now crazy thick transparency and significant other so millions from now was kind of cool i love that song. i like millions from now yeah really cool i like he was saying like like yeah millions from now i I won't (laughs) remember you yeah (laughs) Yeah. and that's two chains right there like he's like man i won't remember yeah, <laughs> when it comes in super hard, bro. That was what. Uh, Tyler, was you. Te- was, I can't remember if you texted me or if you said something to me, but you hella like crazy, crazy thick. thick. Crazy thick was dope. I like uh, <laughs> when I first heard it. Well, what got my attention originally was the fact that he had sampled his own like jail interview. Oh shit! Because at first I was like, wait, like is that is that him? And I was like, oh yeah, that's the interview. He was like, yeah, you know, I had this. Girl, she was stupid thick or whatever. And so he like samples that and then it leads into the beat. Oh, I didn't even know <laughs> and, that. And uh, I was like, yo, that's freaking sick. But then he comes in because he was talking about, yeah, the shorty was super thick. So he's like, Ugh, and he's yeah. <laughs> talking about crazy beep, thick. Beep, 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 yeah. Beep. And uh, I thought it was really playful. <laughs> I liked I liked seeing 2 Chains and Lil Wayne just be playful and just fuck around on that shit. You know, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that song is hella funny to me. That has to be... My least favorite. Song. I was going to say, I was going to say, I'm, I, I get why you like it, Tyler, but I don't think I agree with you. Yeah, yo, yo. it's all good. But like the flow is crazy. Like how he spells it out like for 
the hook and like everything's just uh, uh. super <laughs> cool though. It's yeah. like dope song, but I did not add it to the likes. Very cool though. So which one was your guys' favorite out of that scene? Let me. It might mine, be millions from that. Let me check this transparency. one. Transparency. That one was super with good. Usher, oh my god! That one was heck of good. I've liked all the ones with features so far, but it's just super good project. Oh my god! And they rent it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that one was hella dude, good. That yeah, transparency is heck of good. I Wayne's really verse in that is super good. I love how on topic it is, and like <laughs> it's just in and out. Yeah. Oh. Does, does that one have a beat switch? No. It's, no, so. no one doesn't. Because I know they had like two or three songs and there was beat switches. Yeah, I couldn't I remember if G6 has a beat switch. Yeah, yeah it does. that one. Significant Other has a beat switch. Um, And I can't remember the other one. I can't remember the other one. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the other one but, either. But Transparency would probably be my favorite from that stretch. So good. That's cool. Yeah, Transparency was lit. But millions from now, I love that mindset. And then, um, Definitely a 2 chains type of other. thing. I like that beat. It, yeah, because it's a little biased, but it sounds like a native chant. Okay. And so, like, mm. I was like, oh, like, this is sick. Like, we included. Yeah. But that's cool. I really like, that sounds like serious. And it's like, well, at least it feels serious. So, I like that song. That's, that's cool. Yeah, that song definitely had a more, like, mature tone to it, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, was it that one that I told you that, that was probably, like, one of my favorite Wayne verses? I don't know if it was that song. No, I thought you said it was in like bars or something. No, it might have been insignificant out there. Because the predict. The predict. Okay, maybe not that one. Yeah. <laughs> but. It's <laughs> a B switch. Yeah. It was off on the B switch. After that, we get to scene three. Scene three. Uh, Ladies, so man. PPA. We talked about the horns on that shit. So good. The horns are crazy. So good. Um, the hook is hella funny. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. But the horns definitely were the thing that stuck out to me about that song. I remember I was delivering and this song came on and I like took mental note. I was like, I have to mention the horns on this song. And then you did it before yeah. I even had to. Yep. So good. So be oh, I love horns in any rap song. Oh yeah. Me too. Me too. I felt like the production of the whole album in general was like super freaking good. Oh, I thought yeah. Benny the Butcher killed on that song. He he murdered it. He I was and yeah. it was the perfect beat for him for them to like pick him as the feature too because it has that like old school dusty like boom bap kind of sound, which yeah. is yeah. the type of shit that Benny goes on usually. Oh yeah. So yeah, that was a great song for them to pick Benny for. That one was one of my favorites. I thought they should have put Rick Ross on that too. Wasn't Rick Ross? He was on a later song. Yeah. But I think if they had Rick Ross on that one too, like keep everything, you know, Lil Wayne did great, 2 Chainz did great, Benny the Butcher did great, but then add Rick Ross like okay. somewhere somewhere in there. You just think he could fit on that beat? Oh, yeah. Like, because I've listened to a lot of Rick Ross and uh, when I first heard the instrumental, my first thought actually was like, what, Rick Ross? And then uh, he wasn't on it. And I was like, wait, but it was Benny the Butcher, you know, and all three of them killed it. Like, I love that song a lot. Yeah. But um, I was definitely expecting Rick Ross. I think it would have been cool if they added him. Yeah, I he would have. I feel I could definitely him. see him fitting on that. He would have baby boy double limb, baby boy by the rim. So I, I shame? thought shame yeah. was. A, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> dude! This whole <laughs> this, sick, this whole stretch, bro, from from like Oprah and Gale through bars, like that three song stretch bro, is so crazy to me. Insane, because shame the reference to ODB and everything, like yeah, and two chains. He's kind of sounded just like him. like you know. He did a pretty good job. He sounded pretty close to him. It was like, he did great on that type of rap. And 2 Chains, I felt like, kind of spazzed out in that type of way a couple times in the album, which I thought was so freaking cool. Like, yeah. He did he did a really good job. Oh, yeah. I thought, uh, what, Lil Wayne, when he starts out his verse on that, like, me and 2 Chains go Wu-Tang on you. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh yeah. I, I, had, I was so into that. I was like, holy crap, dude. It was, it was a great rhyme yeah, scheme right there. Yeah. That was, nice. that was a pretty lit chop. part of the song. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, scene three, crazy run, honestly. Like, Cause I bars, like PPA a lot. I like the, like the movement. And they had Fabulous in it. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's just sick. I forgot fabulous. that Fabulous was on that song. And then uh, Oprah and Gail with Benny the Butcher. 
Shame. Ugh. With the yeah, bro. And then bars. Yeah, bro. That's that stretch is crazy. I get it to you. Mm. Got the disease called bars. <laughs> I get it to you. Yeah, the beats are crazy yeah. for that whole stretch, and they're they're like all different. Yeah, uh, yeah. That that probably might be my uh my favorite stretch. I think so too. I think that's my that's favorite. Scene yeah, that's the, the best scene. The album for sure. I think so too. <laughs> what is your favorite from that scene? Oh, because I can't. Ah, oh, that's tough for me. Mine's gonna have to be shame. I think it's. I think mine is shame. I think mine too. shame too. Actually, yeah. yeah. On the way here, I was thinking bars just because of how ill and how dumb. Like they go dumb on it, but like yeah, shame is a little more like. It's just smooth. It's just playful. Right? It's just, yeah, yeah. It's just, just rapid. You know? Yeah. Like, that's it's that. Cool. That's when it. rapping's fun right there, it's you know? Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mars is dope, too. I think I would have to go with Shame, too. Mm-hmm. It's hella cool. Godzilla was pretty sick. I'm not really Godzilla cool. was wild. Um, what was it? What's a, gor- what's a gorilla to Godzilla? To, yeah. that. The synths on that beat were like... I, did, I was not expecting that beat after that stretch, because... They had like more traditional like yeah. like samples, in, like, very electronic and big. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It, like that transition, I think it's good that they put an in interlude there in between those because yeah. it was such mm-hmm. a stark transition. Yeah, at that point in the album, like I was delivering and I was like, "Damn, this don't even sound like the same album as the last three uh, songs that yeah. I listened to." <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty cool. I liked the the mindset of that one too. Like, what's a gorilla to Godzilla? You know, King Kong whooped his ass. Actually, I think King Kong got whooped by Godzilla, but I can't remember. Anyway. <laughs> I actually couldn't tell you. I thought that uh, it ended really sick with Moonlight too. Yeah, I thought so too. Like, I didn't really like Crown Snatcher, if I'm being honest. I really? I to it once, unfortunately. Crown okay. Snatcher, I thought was pretty cool. It wasn't like my favorite on the album, but I, th- I was like, it's still them. Executing, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not saying I would skip it. Like I still let it play whenever I listen to it, yeah. but it's just not one of my favorites. Uh, right. Definitely I don't even think that made like top five in the album, but it was still good for sure. Although the one the one that did have Rick Ross in it is actually the only song in the album, besides the interludes, that mm. I didn't download. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And so so even though I was expecting and I thought it would be cool to hear Rick Ross in the other one. I don't know if, like, I don't think it was him. You know, it's like, I'm not blaming him or whatever. But yeah. I just think that song in general wasn't, like, my favorite. That was the only one I didn't add. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely could have seen him fitting on um, Oprah and Gail with them. I feel like he would have been a good fit on there, too. Yeah, like, I just think he would have probably executed a lot better on that. Uh, what would you guys think about Moonlight? I actually thought that was a really sick way to end the album. Yeah. It was, it felt more like personal, like a little bit. They got like a little bit more vulnerable on that one, which like, I feel like that's always a good way to end the album. Yeah, exactly. Just open up a little bit. Yeah, like when you're closing out the story, you know, it's got to be personal. Got to be touching. Right, because because uh, what they say, people don't remember what you made them think. They remember what you made them feel. Yeah. You know? uh, so you got to like yeah. end it with something that's gonna make them be like. Damn, I felt that. And plus, yeah. if they already got that far, then they they care. You know what I mean? Right. Like they wouldn't get that far in the album if they didn't care. So right. like at that point, you know you can be vulnerable because somebody who cares is listening. That's true. So yeah, that's super true. Actually, that's a, that's a really good spot, uh, reason to have songs like that at at the end of a project. Never really thought about that. But would this be when? your guys' favorite album of like all the albums that dropped that day? Because a bunch of albums dropped that day. You know. It's probably my favorite album that dropped this year. Mm. Wow. Mm. Damn. I can't even... I don't even remember what album was dropped this oh, year. Oh, wait. Mm, actually... No. I got a lot of D-Day albums D-Day above this one for this year. D-Day dropped last year? Or was that this year? What are you talking about? Dreamville? D-Day? D-Day was, that was year? last year, I think. That was last year. Yeah, okay. D-Day okay. was last year. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> 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 I was like, ooh, shit. But yeah. Maybe I think probably my favorite album to drop this year. Mm. Yeah, oh yeah, can't remember of a album that really got me this year. What did Kendrick come out this year? No, Kendrick came out last year. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I know, right? That's crazy. Cole was two years ago. Yeah, where where is the fall off, Cole? That's kind 
For it real. Better be, this is taking a while. It's not, good. The, not, not the excited. Cole, if you're watching this, which you're not. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are, don't rush. Don't listen to me. <laughs> not too sure. I, I don't know enough albums that came out this year. I wasn't really paying attention. I mean, there was the Andre. I think right now my favorite is Wadir, uh, Alchemist, and Earl Sweatshirt. Dang, I haven't heard that, actually. I think that's my favorite. I, one of my favorite producers, one of my favorite rappers getting together. It's, that Fetty Wap album was pretty spicy. Fetty Wap dropped an album this yeah, year. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's hella funny. I thought it was pretty good. I only heard like one or two songs from it, but that one song they showed me was hecka good though. Yeah. I was like, "Ooh, dang!" I want to listen to it. Above this one. This one, ugh. it's ill, and it's like a sequel almost to the other one. It is, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It almost has like the same cover. I will say, um, I was I didn't really like the mixtape that wayne put out earlier this year the like fix, fix before, before the, the six, six. Yeah. yeah i didn't really like that mixtape but i thought i, I like this album so i like some of the songs off the mixtape i was it definitely like fixed me <laughs> okay like, it, it held yeah. you over yeah yeah i was like, gave oh. you gave you a little crack yeah. hit before <laughs> before the next wayne album <laughs> yeah i gave you my face for sure like cat food that shit was dope i hated that song <laughs> It's unique. It's unique for sure. That, that song was if that's the one I'm remember, that's the one where he's. How does that one go again? Uh, uh, oh, Katrina. Yeah. Oh, Serena. Yeah, I yeah. didn't like Ooh. that one. Katrina. Yeah. What was the one where he was just like titties, 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 titties? Oh I was my like, gosh. What the fuck is going on? I remember that yeah. too. I was like, well, this boy's fast. I was like, what is going on? I, didn't say yeah. I had every song. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like rock star status right there. <laughs> That shit was hella funny. I was, <laughs> I was like dropping off a package, and I was just like titties, 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 just in my ear. I was like, "What the hell's going <laughs> on, bro?" That shit was funny. As Imagine hell. playing that live though, mm, the young and the whole crowd. That was pretty good. The one that he released from jail. Mm -hmm. I, I don't oh, think I listened to it. Court, uh, like the picture of him. Yeah, in yeah. Court. yeah. I don't think I listened to it. Some of the songs were pretty saucy, like "Money on a Dresser," "Money on a Dresser." Uh, <laughs> that <was> good. <laughs> it's a good album. Sure, I have to listen to it. it. Yeah, there's a, still so much music to hear, I man. I have a note of like a bunch of albums that came out this year, but it's, my phone's over there, so <laughs> I can't use phone. <laughs> uh, both of Nas's albums were cool too. I did not. I haven't dove into those at all, unfortunately. I've been sleeping. Bro, you love Hit Boy too. Like, if anybody should delve into those six albums, it's you. <laughs> I know. Oh, hit boy i just literally and those are yeah bros hit boy did his fucking thing for that six album stretch bro. every every album sounds different like he's crazy yeah that's wild it's it's cool to see hit boy's discography too like going all the way back to what's that one that he had with kendrick actually freestyle or mad city or something yeah, like backseat that. yeah backseat freestyle. freestyle yeah like that one. <laughs> that's a crazy album that Far back. i think that right there was like my favorite hit boy beat for a long time. She was just so raw, dude. I like the. Was like two EPs with Big Sean? Yeah, I was about to say I like some of the stuff he does with Big Sean, like the Detroit Cipher. Like that thing's sick. Like there's like oh, ten different that? beats in there. Well, he's on the first beat at least. Oh damn! It's like hit yeah, boy. It's like a one with like a hella delay on it. Uh huh. Mm. And then you start digging. He probably did the whole thing. Could have. But yeah, bro. If you want to know where to, if you, cause like, if you don't want to listen to like all six all at once, let me know if you want to know where to start and I'll tell you my favorites from the six and you can start at those so. if you want. Or out of the Nas albums? Yeah. The Nas and Hit Boy ones. Mm, 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 mm. I liked, uh, I'm pretty sure it was King's Disease 3. Ultra Black. All six of them are um, worthy of a listen, but King's Disease 3 is my personal favorite. Bro. And Magic 1 is a very close second. A very King's, close second. King's Disease 3 was just freaking... Ma I think Grip dropped an album this year, actually. I don't, I've never heard it. Oh, do you, have you ever heard of Grip? Mm -mm. Dude, he's saucy. He's ill. Is he like super lyrical or like what kind he's of... Like, he's like yes. JID level. Oh shit, okay. Like, and I think he raps with like Kenny Mason... And like that, like little group they got. Okay, so that's the that. kind of vibe that yeah. he's got. Okay, <laughs> for sure. He's nice. I'll send you a song or two. Yeah, you should. Yeah, you'll send me some hit boy nice songs. 
yeah. no exchange. Okay, let's do it. That's crazy. And King's Disease 2 also. also King's crazy. Disease 2 is also crazy. Great. I would say those are the top three. Man. Those are the three that, if you want a place to start, those three. Just King's Disease? The first King's Disease is really good, too. Or are you talking about Magic? First King's Disease is my least favorite. Um, but I really only know that one song with, uh, what's the name? Replace Me. Get a hard to replace oh, it's me. with Don Tolliver. Yeah, Don Tolliver. Yeah. And Big Sean. Yeah, that's yeah that song's pretty good. Yeah, yeah song, that song's pretty good. good. That one is my least favorite of the six, though. But, oh, that uh, album. That oh, album. Yeah. yeah, that album is my least favorite of the six. K- KD3 is my favorite. Then Magic 1. Then KD2. I haven't heard any of the Magics, actually. Magic 1 is goaded, bro. Like, that shit is so nasty. He, The song 4016 building, when he did that shit live at the concert we yeah. were at... That shit, I did not expect that shit to fucking be that, like, crazy yeah. live. Like, Nas doesn't normally have, like, big, like, live bangers like that. So to see that song, like, go that crazy, I was like, damn. Because I already fucked with that song, but that made that song crazier for me. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, Magic 1 is insane, bro. Nas was spazzing that whole album. And Hit Boy made, like, a, it came out, like, on Christmas Day. Has a super, like, wintry, like, cold start kind of vibe to it. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty dope. I fuck with it. Damn. Yo, that's sick, bro. Magic One is go to. It, sometimes it's my favorite. Like KD Three is usually my favorite, but sometimes I'm like, nah, Magic One might be better. Like <laughs> it just depends on how I'm feeling. KD Three is pretty freaking good. KD Three is cr- pretty crazy. The fact that it has no features too is pretty mind blowing. Mm, that is. Crazy. Well, and it just has so many good songs on it. Like that, I wasn't expecting to to be super into that album because I I guess I was like on a Nas stretch, you know, and um. So I had just been listening to like so much Nas, you know, at that point I was just like, it's Nas, you know, it's Nas. But then like I started listening to King's Disease 3 and I was like, holy fuck, dude, this shit's so good. That album is but it has crazy. Plenty of gems on it. That album was like the victory lap of the sh- Like that's when the stretch was like at its peak was when King's Disease 3 came out. And like that's when like the hype around their stretch was at its peak. And like, yeah, I just remember when that album came out, like, yeah, that shit was crazy. It was like popping for him. Yeah, is that why everyone was saying he's he hit his like third peak or something like that? Yeah, no, once once King's Disease three came out, they were like, okay, this is like this is his third prime, like this is oh, his primes. That's prime. what it is. Yeah, because yeah. like then at that <laughs> point he had the like King's Disease two to Magic to King's Disease three, like those three right in a row. People were like, holy fuck, he's fifty doing this shit. Like that's wild, and like making him good, <laughs> like good. <laughs> he's out rapping most rappers still. Yeah, like, it's crazy. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. He's got. I just I just love his uh his like storytelling ability and how he can do it with the rhyme schemes that he has. Like he's gotten so good at it. He's crazy vivid. Yeah. You can like see what he's saying like a lot yeah. of times. That's one of my favorite things about his raps. Like locomotive for that reason. Like that song makes me feel like I grew up in New York. Yeah, it definitely has I that vibe. I grew up in the desert out here. <laughs> Staring at sagebrush. <laughs> <laughs> That's hella funny. That's crazy. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne is going to have Carter 6 coming out eventually. Is it coming out this year? Or? Probably not. Probably next year. Okay. Or I would hope. I would think next year. Let me get something. let me get my tape out before Wayne drop, bro. Uh, <laughs> for real. <laughs> for real. Man, that's going to be crazy. The fakes before the 6. I have to re-listen to that. What is mixtapes called? Where he raps on other people's beats? The Sorry for the Wait. No, the drought. Dedication. Dedication. No. Ded- oh, dedication. Yeah. That's oh, right. Those are That's some right. sick mixtapes. I've been into those super heavy, especially because I have YouTube music, mm-hmm. and so like I can listen to like everybody's mixtapes on there. Yeah. Everybody posted mixtapes to YouTube. Yeah. So it's super sick. Those things are dope, dude. The dedication and the gangster grills mm-hmm. <clears throat> that he did with. Uh, no, he hosted D Day too. Oh my God! What's it? DJ Drama? DJ yeah, Drama. Yeah, DJ there Drama. you go. Yeah, he's the one that created. Uh, Gangsta Grills. Gangsta Grizzles. Those are some fire ass mixtapes too, dude. I want to start doing that as a DJ, bro. You should. I'm to be the next DJ Khaled, bro. Just get hella artists together. Make start like a like do, just do some DJ drama shit. Start like a mixtape. You already have hella artists together. Ooh. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. <laughs> uh plugs real quick. Go peep Kid Native on Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere you listen to music. Oh. Mm-hmm. Go mm-hmm. peep loose tea on the same places. Mm-hmm. Um, go follow both of them on Instagram. Follow Luminous Records on Instagram. That's right. Follow loose tea on TikTok. Do you have a TikTok? Nah. I feel like you just lied. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> follow loose tea on tiktok and then uh fuck oh yeah search kenny moss anywhere you listen to music go follow k hoops or subscribe to k hoops i mean 100 percent. follow my tiktok yo peace <laughs>